After the fall of West Africa's two great empires, Wagadu and Mali, another empire was to form. In the 15th century, the Songhai people arguably produced the most feared king in all of West African history. He was characterized as the degenerate, accursed, despotic, godless, profligate, arrogant, cold-hearted, the shedder of blood, the great tyrant, the notorious evildoer, the killer of so many people that only God Most High knows the count. Such are the characterizations of Sunny Ali in the Chronicles initially suggesting a uniform assessment of his reign and its meaning. The fame of Sunny Ali spread beyond the limits of the Middle Niger. In Northern Africa, he was acknowledged as the most powerful of the black sovereigns of the West, and he's mentioned in the European annals under the name of Sunny Heli, King of Timbuktu, whose power extended all the way to the West Atlantic coast. Today, we're going to be talking about the most feared king of West Africa. Animation can be pretty expensive, so if you'd like to contribute to its continued development, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. The cruelty of Sunny Ali was proclaimed to be so great that it reached far into the Muslim world. One Egyptian source calls him a sort of Timur Lang who destroyed worshippers of God and cities. We know him today as Sunny Ali, but the people knew him by many different names. Sunny Arubur, the Chi Ali, or Dali. Regardless, all who feared him knew he was great, as all his titles translated to either great or greatness. Dali, as his soldiers called him, meaning the very great, is what we will refer to him as. He was the founder and ruler of the Songhai Empire in 15th century West Africa. After he laid the foundation, it went on to become the largest empire in West African history. The tyrant, the debauched, the cursed, the oppressor, the Chi Ali, last of the dynasty, was always victorious and destroyed all the countries that he chose. None of his armies in his presence were defeated always the conqueror, never the defeated. Though he was characterized as a great evil in the West African chronicles of the Tariq al-Fatash and the Tariq es sudan the most salient, ubiquitous, and agreeable description of him was his immense power and imperial greatness. The Sunni dynasty, centered at Gao, rose to prominence and independence from the shadows of a deteriorating Mali in the late 14th century. It is from this dynastic lineage that Dali descends. The Dali is believed to have been born to a woman from Dendi, a land known for its obstinate dedication to traditional African beliefs. Oral tradition proclaims that spiritual or magical powers come from the mother. From his father, he was initiated into this old traditional African religion. His esoteric upbringing furthered the mystery and intrigue behind him from whence his power projection seems to have originated. In this way, he synthesized and internalized within himself the experience of the women magicians of Kukia, the scholars of the Pharaoh country, as well as the masters of the science of black magic. Tradition thus says that he received the master word Jindizi, that is the first formula that made powerful divinities with all temperaments his obedient servants. As we can see from the very beginning, this king is labeled as a powerful other, especially in relation to the growing Islamized West African region. From the perspective of Muslim scholars, the Dali embodied the traditional African threat. The declining Mali empire left a power gap in West Africa. The Middle Niger was extremely important. In this time, it represented in ways exceeding, as it had before, state power. Control over this region was a crucial function to imperial success and sustainability. Having dominion gave the ruler immediate access to international commerce and the Islamic world. The Dali knew this 
and in order to control the Middle Niger, he had to conquer its most powerful cities, Timbuktu and Jenne. His principal adversaries in accomplishing this task were the Tuareg in the north and the Maasai in the south. Dali was a great administrator backed by a strong cavalry and with an organized fleet of ships to control the Niger, his entire reign was focused on campaigns of war and expansion. Like the great leaders before him, he positioned himself at the head of his cavalry, which certainly expanded the powerful aura around him. The Dali's first campaign, ironically, was against his own. Some suggest that he was not next in line to the throne, thus, he had to fight for it. The sources tell us that after his father died, the Songhai prince rose up against the Songhai, fighting them until he overcame them and gained dominion over them as his father and other sultans of Songhai had done before him. After becoming king, his first order of business was to conquer Timbuktu. Initially invited by the governor to take the city from the Tuareg because of his disdain for their tax policies, a change of heart rapidly transpired after the death of his father. This elicited a prompt response from the Dali. What a difference in understanding between this young man and his father. When the Dali showed up with his army at Timbuktu, the governor and many scholars loyal to Tuareg overlordship fled. The Tuareg didn't seem to put up much of a fight, perhaps acknowledging the might of the Dali. After taking one of the gems of the Middle Niger, rumors of his cruelty ensued, leading many scholars to despise him. Jenny was then in his sight. The sources tell different accounts about how long the Dali siege of Jenny was, but the most reasonable time frame seems to be about six months. According to oral tradition, Jenne had never been conquered, and so the Dali was eager to do so. The battle between Jenne and the Dali went back and forth for months. He encircled the city when the waters rose with his 400 naval pirogues, seeking to impede all who wished to leave or enter the city. As famine began to settle, a senior military official from Jenne secretly informed the Dali of the city's plight. It was only a matter of waiting. Jenne was undone. Finally, a young boy came out to meet the Songhai, to their shock. The Dali then remarked, Have we been fighting a boy all this time? They were soon informed that the young Sultan's father had died during the siege, and he succeeded him. The Dali sat with the young man on a rug, gladly accepting Jenne's surrender. The Dali then asked permission to marry his mother, which he obliged. Because of this event, it later became customary for the Sultan of Songhai to sit together with the Sultan of Jenne on a single rug. The Dali would go on to consolidate his power with brief excursions in Bambara country, fights with the Fulani, and a northern tour of sorts. These battles took their toll, but his many campaigns were not fruitless, hinting at his acquisition of conscripted soldiers bolstering Songhai military might. He replenished his forces in Lulu and placed the army under his commander. Afumba, in all likelihood, went on to conquer Kebi in Hausaland, but the Dali himself focused on the Maasai. If he was to reign supreme in the Middle Niger, he had to rid himself of the Maasai threat. With his revitalized army, he invaded the Maasai capital, destroyed the royal residence, and mercilessly killed all of the residents. Remarkably, the Maasai king still managed to sack Walata. The Dali, watching closely, three years later, finally met the Maasai king head on and put him to flight with the Dali pursuing his defeated foe all the way into Maasai territory. After this victory, the Dali would be the principal ruler of the entire region. The Middle Niger had not seen such a force in its history. The southern threat was quelled for many decades. Skirmishes, along with further consolidation efforts, continued after the Maasai victory, but his position as Dali, the very great, was solidified. In the end, according to oral tradition, on a campaign in 1492, 
The dolly drowned in the river, the circumstances in which this took place being suspect. But that's a story for another day. If you like these animated videos, be sure to support its continued development on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below.